wanted to tell you about why we chose the nervous system to regenerate, to reverse aging in. Because we could have chosen the skin, could have chosen the liver to reverse aging. But nerve cells become old very quickly. As soon as we're you know, three years old, if we damage our eye or we break our back, our spine, we're not going to walk again, we're not going to see again. We, we know that, right? It's because nerve cells become old very quickly and they don't act like they were when we were embryos. And so this shows an embryonic nerve growing in the dish. That's great. But as, we're, as we turn into adults, if you put one of our nerves in a dish, it'll just sit there. It'll try its best to try and grow, but it really won't grow very well. So we thought, what if you could take adult nerve cells, damage them, or even just old nerve cells in the eye, and turn their age back to when they were young? Would they grow and function like they were young again. So how did we decide to do that? Well, there was a Nobel Prize awarded to Shinya Yamanaka from Japan for the discovery that there are a set of four genes called the Yamanaka factors that can take an adult cell and turn it into a stem cell. So quite simply, any high school student could take one of your skin cells in your mouth, take it back to my lab or even to the high school lab, put in these four genes from Yamanaka, which we call OSK and M for short, and those cells, many of them would become stem cells. Not just normal stem cells, but pluripotent stem cells, meaning they could become any type you want. We could regrow, we could grow a little mini brain in the dish. You can now do that. It's pretty freaky, we'll grow your own mini brain in the dish. Um, I don't think they're conscious, thank goodness. Um, but we could build any tissue, and that, that was well, wor well worthy of a Nobel Prize, right? So we wondered, could we use some aspect of this discovery to reverse aging? So we don't want to take them all the way back to being an embryo or to a, a stem cell. You know, if we did that, we'd all end up with the world's biggest tumors in our bodies. We wanted to know if we could do partial reversal and just take off the right methyls pick off just the right plaque on the teeth without taking all your teeth off, which is what Yamanaka did. So we didn't know if it would work. We had some clue, because there's a scientist at the Salk Institute that a couple of years ago showed that if you turn on all four of these genes in a mouse, it lives 40% longer. But that, but that sounds great until I tell you that every three days, if they didn't stop the treatment, the mice would die. So the, I think he may get the Nobel Prize for this discovery, but it wasn't perfect because those poor mice were hit with these factors and they would almost die, and then they'd let them recover for another five days and they'd hit them again. This is not going to be a medicine anytime soon, but it sure is an interesting proof of principle that you can turn on these things and make an animal live longer. Now, it was a short-lived mouse, so we still have to show that this happens in a, a regular mouse. But I'll show you what happens in regular mice when you, when you put these factors in. All right. So what I'm, I'm showing you for the first time is what it was like to make a discovery of a lifetime. This was the discovery of my lifetime. These are conversations with uh, my student, Ryan, who made this discovery. He put the Yamanaka factors, not all four of them, he found that three were safe and effective. The, you know the one at the end, the M, Mick? He left that off because that causes cancer. That's known to be a problem. But OSK put into the back of the eye regenerated the, the optic nerve in these mice. And so what you're seeing are pictures for the first time that he was sending me of regenerating optic nerves in mice. So we had damaged the back of the eye, and here we have it, the regrowth of something that should has no business regrowing in an adult mouse, but it, it's it was you know one of those things where you know we're, we're kind of celebrating that we've we've made a big discovery, and uh, I I mention it also because when you read the book you'll get a sense of what it was like to experience such a discovery. So this is it. This is um, a regular optic nerve that's been damaged. Um, it's been pinched, and the nerves have died off towards the brain. So the brain is out that way, and the eye is over here. 
And this mouse has lost a lot of its nerves and it's never going to see again. But in this mouse, in the, in the mouse I'll show you down here, we've reprogrammed its eye to be young again. We've put those three Yamanaka factors in, turned them on with just an antibiotic called doxycycline. Now, it doesn't have to be an antibiotic. Sometimes people say, what's so good about the antibiotic? We've just engineered the system so that the antibiotic is the switch, so that we can turn it on and off. It's an easy way. You just give the mice an injection of antibiotic or put it in their water supply. So if we ever have a drug like this, it may be that we get treated with the, the virus, which is the delivery vehicle, and then we take an antibiotic to turn it on and off at will. So we get reset multiple times. Anyway, let, let me show you this. This was the result that most of the nerves here have survived the, the problem, and they've started to grow towards the brain. We don't know how they know where the brain is. They're not growing up that way. They're growing towards the brain. That's a mystery. But then we did a really cool experiment, which was if it can make these damaged neurons survive, what about if we give it to just regular healthy but old mice? What happens to their vision? And I don't know about you, but you know I'm now in my 50s, and I'm starting to become like old mice. We lose our ability to see. So here's an experiment, and I need to give credit to um, the lab of Bruce and Meredith Cassandra. They are at a mass Ioneer here in Boston. And what they do is they ignore, ignore the feces. This is irrelevant to the experiment. <laughs> I think if, if we were handled by giant things, we'd be pretty upset too. But anyway, what they're doing is, so he's standing on the platform, and this mouse is a year old, so those mice actually have become blind. And you, we know this because when these, these lines move, they don't watch the lines. It's called the optomotor response. So if I play this for you, you'll see um, that it's not moving its head. It's really not, not looking anywhere. And we can videotape this for, for you know, half an hour. It's not going to see the lines. But you know, if we see moving lines, we're going to move our head. That's just the natural response. So we took uh, mice of the same age, we gave them a, a virus that carried the three genes into the eye, and the virus infected the nerves at the back of the eye in the retina, and they sat there until we gave them the antibio antibiotic doxycycline to turn on those genes. Three weeks later, after reprogramming their eyes and making them young again, and by the way, we've measured the age of the eye. They do get younger based on the clock. The question was, does it work? Or does the clock change, but that's just like a clock on the wall. You don't really go back in time if you move the hands. Or if you move the hands, does time really go backwards? So this was a really good experiment, and it was a really good day for, for Bruce. So what Bruce called me about let me get this started. So it was 10 p.m. at night. It was about a year ago. And he calls me and he says, I'm sorry it's late, but I have to tell you, we just had a really amazing result. And this was the video that he sent me. For the first time in history, we've got mice that have been cured of blindness. That's a mouse that can see. And we've done this on dozens of mice. This isn't just a fluke. Every mouse that gets our treatment gets their vision back. And we can measure the, the, the neuronal activity at the back of the eye. And we can see that those nerves before the treatment have no electrical activity. But after reprogramming them, we get the blips back. They work again. And we can read the pattern of genes which are switched on and off. And genes that went off during aging come back on with treatment. And genes that went on by accident, the scratches come back to normal. So we're truly resetting the epigenome so that cells can be young again and mice that shouldn't be seeing can see again. And we've done this also in glaucoma. Most people have somebody they know, friends or family with glaucoma, pressure in the eye, damaging the retina. We've tested mice with that disease and we can restore their vision as well. So our first drug if all goes well, will be a drug to treat and restore vision in glaucoma patients.